Well, I would love to have this cleric fire off a spell, but the chance to miss is just greatly increased due to the cover. Uh, I don't know if it's greatly uh, increased that it'll miss, but just don't want to waste a first level spell on something like this. So um, let's have him advance. Uh, Warhammer in hand. He's uh, going to move here 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Was it 25 feet for him? Yes. The cleric can go 25 feet. All right, so he's going to circle around and try to engage this ghoul from back here. And well, let's see, what's the best weapon? Probably the Warhammer. Plus four to the attack. The ghoul's armor class is only 12. So let's see how we do. We've rolled a 9. So 10, 11, 12, 13. That's actually good enough to hit the ghoul. What kind of damage are we looking at with the Warhammer? 1d8 plus 2 bludgeoning damage. 1d8 plus 2. Well, 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 damage to the ghoul. The ghoul has 22 hit points. So that's going to take it down to 18. Uh, maybe we'll just mark that with this d20. Well, the ghoul just seems to ignore uh, the wound delivered by the cleric and instead attempts to uh, reach out and pull in the halfling and take a bite right in his neck. So we're going with a bite attack. That means it is uh, plus, only plus two to this attack to hit. And that's going to miss. We've got a six plus two is an eight. Um, don't even know the rogue's armor class off the top of my head, but that's not going to be good enough. So we got lucky there. Uh, the rogue remains uh, uninjured. So now that um, the ghoul has taken its turn, we're going to go to the folk hero, the fighter. And he's right here. And I guess he's going to maybe take a shot with his bow. I think, I think using his bow is what he is best at. Now, um, I wonder if there's anything about cover and that halfling. The halfling is small. Let me see if it's still going to give that uh, uh, ghoul some cover. Yeah, we're in a bad situation here. Uh, it's just as far as being found in such a cramped space. I can't really move in uh, to get the shot off. If I move in close with the bow, I'm going to have to be at disadvantage. That means that I'm going to roll two 20-sided dice and take the lower of the two results. And I don't want to do that. So I think he's going to try to fire where he is and see if he can hit despite having a three quarters cover uh, with the rogue in the way. He's just directly in his way. So um, minus five to the shot, I would say. We rolled an 18. Uh, minus five takes that down to a 13. So we haven't even added our bonus uh, for the weapon attack. So that's good enough to hit with the bow. So that's, that's good. Uh, the longbow is going to do 1d8 plus 3 damage. Let's see how it goes here. We rolled a 7. Plus 3 is 10. That's a great hit uh, on the ghoul. So 10 damage is going to take that ghoul down to 8 hit points. Uh, let's see. Who is up next in the initiative order? Folk heroes finished. Uh, it's our rogue's turn. Well, <clears throat> our rogue will try to fight with a short sword. Already engaged uh, with the, um, the ghoul. So short sword attack. 
We've rolled a nine, uh, adding to that the short sword bonus, attack bonus of five. That's going to be 14. That's good enough to hit also. Damage is 1d6. But I think we still get to add that extra six for the sneak attack. Why? Because our cleric is uh, actively engaged with the target and is not incapacitated. So he can take advantage of the distraction caused by the cleric to perhaps sink his blade into a more vulnerable area. So a six and a two is eight. We're going to add three to that. 11 points of damage. That should kill the ghoul. So we've taken out the ghoul. Well, we're just uh, blazing through here. Uh, the ghoul is down. I guess we'll take a look and see. Ah, my treasure token is a skull. I put this in here just to sort of... Uh, mess with myself and and you know sometimes you just don't find any treasure so just to add a little bit of randomness there no treasure found in the ghoul's lair all right so we're moving on now the party knows they're getting close still no need to rest we've, we, we've all done a great job of not getting uh, ourselves harmed from these combat encounters so Let's continue along with the same uh, tactic and let's let our rogue explore in this direction. Draws another tile. We've got a hallway and it is white. Is there a wandering monster? No, there isn't. All right, folks, I think we're about here. So as the rogue goes down and the party shuffles ahead to provide support. Uh, we've got one more tile to draw in place and that is this one. And this is the chapel. This is where we needed to, to go. So the chapel is right here and I think We've got something special we need to do out of the storybook. All right, it says, when the heroes reveal the chapel, read the following. The chamber ahead glows with a light of faith and goodness. On the pristine altar, an ancient platinum medallion shaped like a sun with a large crystal embedded in its center waits to be collected. Unfortunately, the chamber isn't empty. Some monsters stand guard as though they were waiting for you to arrive. All right, one thing we're supposed to do, not this token, this one. Uh, icon of Ravenloft. We're supposed to put this marker on the altar uh, to be collected by the heroes. So we need an encounter for this room, something that is uh, more challenging than anything the, the characters have faced so far. All right, folks, this is it. Uh, let's have this be a deadly encounter or close to it. Our budget for five adventurers of first level, a deadly encounter would be around approximately 500 uh, points. So what is in Castle Ravenloft that's around that much? How about a nasty gargoyle? Gargoyles in 5th edition are a challenge rating of uh, 2, and they're worth 450 experience points. So that's right up there, right along the lines of 500. So we're going to have a tough time with this. We may lose some party members. We'll just have to see. Um, this thing's not going to be easy. All right, well, we'll just put the gargoyle there for the moment. The thief scouts ahead, spots the altar. We'll say this is a uh, an enclosed room here down this hallway. This is going to make it a tough fight. Uh, reports back to the party that other than a very ugly statue in the room, uh, things appear to be all clear. So, the 
party would probably put someone guarding here towards the back. Maybe the uh, noble will stand guard, making sure no wandering monster follows them in. The rogue would then circle in along with his uh, fighter. The cleric would come up probably to inspect the relic and the wizard might stand back just a little bit. So let's say that's the situation. And hovering around the holy relic, just as a hand reaches out to pick it up, there is this uh, rough cracking sound and creaking sound of, of stone breaking loose and the statue comes alive and the gargoyle is ready to attack. So let's roll for initiative. All right, well here are the initiative results properly modified by uh, initiative modifiers. So with an 18, the gargoyle goes first. We're gonna have the gargoyle uh, spread its wings and land on top of the altar, pushing its uh, clawed foot down on top of the uh, holy relic, making sure that no one is going to take that precious item uh, from the chapel. Then it is going to make an attack. Who? We've got three possible targets here. Probably the one that was reaching out for the amulet would have been the rogue, uh, typically in, in a rogue-like nature. So uh, maybe the rogue would have been reaching for it, or would the cleric have been reaching for it out of uh, curiosity, perhaps to inspect the medallion? Maybe we'll say the cleric was reaching for it. So we're going to have the gargoyle attack the cleric first. That might be bad. It's going to put our party healer uh, in danger first, but let's get the combat started. Gargoyle attacking the cleric. Well, the gargoyle gets two attacks, uh, a bite and a claw. Its first attack is a 15. Adding four to that attack is going to total a 19. I'm pretty sure our cleric has just been clawed. Wow, the cleric's armor class is great at an 18, but that's going to total a 19. It just hit him. So the, actually the bite attack comes first. Let's do that one. It's going to do 1d6 plus 2 damage. 5 plus 2, that's going to be 7 piercing damage on the cleric from the bite. So perhaps uh, as his arm was trapped under the claw of the uh, gargoyle, it bit down and sank its teeth into his uh, forearm for seven points of damage. Our cleric has a total, uh, let me check here, how many hit points does he have? Of 11 hit points, so that's, that's pretty bad. Our cleric's hurt. All right, so that leaves the cleric with four hit points. And now that gargoyle is going to attack again at the cleric with its claw. We've rolled a four, thank goodness. Four plus four is eight, not good enough. The cleric successfully defends himself from the second attack, the claw attack of the gargoyle. Perhaps his chainmail saved him there. So now we're going into order uh, of the party and oddly enough our noble all the way back here in the hallway gets to go first.